Today on Morning Drive, Rory McIlroy, Brooke Henderson, and Carlos Franco are all defending champions this week. Our resident instructor, Travis Fulton, will take you inside their games and tell you what you should be taking away from each of their swings. Plus, our travel expert, Matt Janella, recently took a trip to Boston, the host city of the PGA Tour this week. He will share what to do, where to stay, and where to play, so you will be an expert when you plan your trip to Beantown. And the United States team authored a resounding victory this year, but we will talk with the coaches that will lead teams at the next Arnold Palmer Cup. Find out what major change is coming to the event named after the king himself. That and much more on Morning Drive, Wednesday, August 30th, 2017. And a happy hump day to you, Damon Hack, alongside Golf Channel Academy lead coach, Travis hey. Fulton. What's on your mind, man? Hey, I'm all things DJ yesterday. Still? I, I still can't get over that bomb he hit in the playoff over that lake. Hey, the new saying now in yeah. professional golf is drive for dough, putt for show. Driver, that distance. You're flipping it around. It's taking over. Interesting you say that. Instagram, courtesy of the PGA Tour. Listen, look, the drive is unbelievable. 341 yeah. yards from DJ. Look at the Jordan Spieth. So the tour says, I still can't get over that line. Jordan Spieth says, I can. I'm <laughs> done with it. Enough. <laughs> that's, 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 that is a great comment right there. But look at the difference there. I mean, incredible line. This is why, Damon, we have Pro Tracer right here. Just yeah. to show the difference, the trajectory and all that. But to look at the difference in those two lines is really remarkable. And it's just another example of just why distance off the tee is such a major advantage. He had 95 yards in that for crying yeah. out loud. When Jordan Spieth beat Matt Kuchar at the Open, he, he took his game to the next level in his own way. Jordan Spieth against DJ. DJ had a gear that no one else on the planet really That's has. That's true, yeah, no one has that gear. I yeah. mean, it's him and maybe one other, maybe Maybe two. Rory, perhaps. We yeah. may talk about Rory in a little bit. A lot about winning and a lot about power on this Wednesday. Let's say good morning to Carl Robinson. Welcome back, how are you? I'm wonderful, Damon. Good morning. Delighted to be back in Studio AP alongside a three-time PGA Tour winner in Chris DeMarco. We are still, I know you've been reflecting on this all week, but that drive from Dustin Johnson, it was so cool to see him back, I thought, Chris, confident, like the player that we saw earlier in the season and getting another win again. Yeah, a drive like that is the reason I'm sitting here <laughs> instead of out there, because that was ridiculous. It really was. That's a line I don't even see, and it's amazing. When he hit it, I'm like, where's he going? Is he going down the other fairway? And then ends up where it was, just, was just... Crazy, because Jordan Spieth hit the, probably the best drive he hit the whole day, and he was 90 yards behind him. Well, Jordan still hit a 315-yard drive, but yeah, DJ trumped him. I love the way Jordan just marched off the tee. He was like, yeah, okay, that's, that's going straight <laughs> over the water and set up a pretty nice approach. Well, let's get straight to the news of the day, and Rory McIlroy is the defending champion at the Dell Technologies Championship this week. TPC Boston has hosted this tournament on Labor Day weekend every year, making it the only event of the season with a scheduled Friday start and Monday finish. So let's remind you how Rory captured his 12th PGA Tour title there last year. He actually started the final road round, excuse me, six strokes back of the lead held by Paul Casey. This is his bunker shot at seven. That beautiful shot controls the spin just to a couple feet. Yeah, that was to four feet. That would be a birdie. We'll move ahead to par three eighth and another birdie chance this to give him a share of the lead, Chris. Yeah, when this um, flat stick is working for him, this is when he's trouble. Drops it right in the middle of the hole. That got him to 13 under par and he wasn't done yet. We will move ahead to the par four ninth and miss his approach from 170 yards. Yeah, and every once in a while you're going to need a little break with maybe just a nice little bounce. You can see he likes it. He's studying it. Gets a nice little kick forward off there, just rolls up there to just about eight feet, nine feet. He would make that for his third birdie in a row to shoot 31 on the front nine. Onto the back nine we go, and the 12th, putting for another birdie, and this would give him the outright lead. And it's these mid-range putts, putts that, um, that get, get him going, and that was dead center right there. So he birdied six of his first 12 holes in this final round. Now 15 under after that. He did bogey, though, the 17th, but 18th from the bunker on the par five. Yeah, very difficult shot here with a slope going up, and then if he hits the pass hole, it rolls down on the other side. What a great shot under that pressure to just about a foot. He would, unsurprisingly, tap this one in for a birdie to shoot a final round 65 and win by two over Paul Casey. It was an incredible week for Rory McIlroy, despite starting it at 38th in the FedEx Cup standings. Well, he will begin his defense at 1.04 p.m. Eastern time on Friday alongside 
Si Woo Kim and Oli schneider who are both currently just ahead of him in the FedEx Cup standings. Rory now sits at number 43, with only the top 30 qualifying, by the way, for the Tour Championship, which is the fourth and final FedEx Cup playoff event. Chris, does it concern you at all at this stage where Rory is on those FedEx Cup standings? Uh, the, the standings don't concern me, because last year he was 38th and he went on the win the FedEx Cup last year. So, I mean, he hoisted that trophy at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. What concerns me more is his health. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he, he's, not allowed, he's not able to practice. Um, he's having um, rib injuries. He wants to practice. He just can't do it. So for him just going out and playing golf and not really getting to practice he wants, that's the concern for me. Well, when you take a little look at his form this season, he's really as we know, not won anything in the 12 starts that he's had. He has had six top 10, so he's finished in the top 10 half of the times he's started. His best finishes all year have been in a tie for fourth, which he has done three times, but that is not a Rory McIlroy type season. And quite often he comes into this stage of the year or has done in recent terms trying to salvage the season. He says he did that last year with the FedEx Cup. It seems to me you mentioned the rib injury. He's in a very different place mentally and physically this year. Yeah, I mean, obviously golf has become more than just you know playing golf it's big business and there's some um, requirements he has to meet with his sponsors and um, you know if, if he had met the, all those requirements earlier he, we might see him taking time off and, and and resting that rib but since you know he's only played 12 tournaments this year he's got to get a couple more in it, it's tough to see it really is because you know a world ca class athlete like that that doesn't have a victory yet it, it really is tough because we expect him Jason Day with zero victories also you're talking about two of the biggest names in the game without a victory this year just lastly with a um, return to a venue like this though that you've had previous success in can you lean a little bit on those memories from last year do you think absolutely uh, you're going back to a place where you've won where you you can see the golf course where you can drive the ball where all the lines look good obviously have great memories yeah I wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me for him to go out and repeat this year I mean he's that type of player if he gets a little hot with the putter and gets going he's you know he's going to be right there all right well our coverage from TPC Boston begins on Friday but now let's find out what else is happening with Damon Hack all right, Carl, how about Brooke Henderson seeking her third straight Cambia Portland Classic? It's an event that Nancy Lopez actually won three times in her career, but in separate years, not in a row. Now, listen, this is interesting. Brooke Henderson, three of her four LPGA wins have come in the Pacific Northwest, to in Portland, and of course, that KPMG Women's PGA Championship outside Seattle at Sahali. So this week in Portland, she begins her defense at 8, 10 a.m. Pacific time, 11, 10 a.m. Eastern, alongside a former world number one in Yanni Sen, an LPGA winner in Miriam Lee. I tell you what, it's fun to watch Brooke Henderson. I watched her hit an iron uh, at the Diamond Resorts and I was amazed, but to see her with a driver in her hand and to have her alongside Rory, yeah. This is going to be some fun instruction. This here. is going to be fun here. I mean, it's full speed. There's nothing left in oh. the tank. It's what I love about Brooke Henderson, the way that she attacks the golf ball with the driver. And of course, Rory, we know he can get it out there as well. You know, youth, power, vibrant, right? This is going to be a fun side-by-side. -side. You know, Brooke is 19 years of age. She's about 265 off the tee. Incredible. You know, Rory, 28 years of age, 316 yards off the tee. So these two can get it out there. So you can see good setups here. We don't want to spend any time in the setup here, Dame. Let's have some fun. <laughs> Let's get into the meat and potatoes here of power and, and how these young players go about it. You look at Roy, the first thing, always lots of width Already. away from the ball. Already yeah. you can see it there. Yeah, you can see the hands very wide outside the right hip. And then, of course, here comes the big turn to the top. You know, Roy recruits a little bit from the lower body. You can see the left knee kind of glance behind the golf ball, the right hip drawing up and back. Now watch this with Brooke. This is remarkable to me. Wide going back, right? but watch the knees going back. Her lower body really doesn't change knee flex at all. Now I don't recommend that. You know, I think you gotta, you gotta let the right leg straighten up a little bit. I think that's gonna release a little bit of tension on the lower back. Okay. This is the way that Brooke has moved the golf club ever since she got into the game. That lower body does it. Unbelievable. Move. This is what flexibility at the age of 19, incredible range of motion in the spine. And look how far spine. past parallel yeah. she is. Do you, do you recommend that John Daly-esque swing? You know, I mean, th that's pretty long for okay. me. I think, you know, for Most the people youth, can't get there. They can't get there okay. and stay in that spine angle. Look okay. at that lower back. Notice, you can see that little dish in the lower back there. Yeah. That's extension. I mean, her, her spine's extending like this. She's not staying down here, Damon. Yeah. Her spine's extending back like this and then keeping that left shoulder tilted down. That I can't really, get there at age 45. Well, I couldn't get there at age 25. I'll tell you what, it'd be hard to get there recruiting yeah. from the lower body. Okay. Letting the right knee, the right Even leg doing, straighten up. For sure. To get in that position and quote unquote stay in your spine angle. Fascinating for me to watch that in the lower body. Now, 
Here we go. Ready? We're going to use yeah. the ground. So here we go. Watch Rory here. He's going to come down, a little pressure into the ground there. Kind of just kind of falls down into the ground. Incredible. Now watch here with Brooke. Look at these two positions, right? Look at the lower body in relationship to the upper. A lot of similarities there, right? Sure. And you can see, oftentimes I get the question here in the lower body, Damon, where we get up here and it looks like the kind of the left hip almost kind of spins back a little right. bit, right? And I think there's a lot where we feel like, okay, I gotta drive the lower body kind of into the lead post, left hip gets over the left ankle. What you see a lot with these young players is you'll see the hips kind of sit down more like this. Yeah. That left hip doesn't initially get up to the lead post. Right kind of sits it down, good orientation to the upper body. And now as we go to impact, watch how the left hip, left knee will move out over the left it ankle. It does move. So I, it gets there. I've seen Justin Rose kind of do that little sit yeah. drill with, with Sean Foley on the range. Yeah. I'm right, Rosie, right? I've seen you kind of do this little <laughs> sit thing. What, what is that all about? Well, that's what it is, right? It, okay. it is a bit of a sit. It's, yeah. You know, we're starting down, we're starting to kind of turn and sit it down. We're kind of falling down into the ground, right? And you can see how this is structured underneath me. Right. I'm not letting it drive out from okay. underneath me. Yeah. Right now I get a lot of that right bit. So that's what you see a lot with these younger players, yeah. right? And with Brooke, exactly the same. Now, she, now from there, she's going to unleash. I mean, she really gets after it from a rotational step. Look at that left foot. Oh, so off the ground, it's practically. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's unbelievable how much she's pushing up and rotating out of the way. And then, of course, from here, the ball is gone, and they're just going to watch it fly down there. Two of the longest hitters on tour. That's what youth looks like in using the ground for leverage, fascinating stuff. I absolutely wow. love looking at this. My back hurts, Travis, <laughs> but that's some cool instructions. What else is happening now? We send it back to Car. Well, guys, the FedEx Cup bubble watch continue, continues. Only the top 100 in the standings after the Northern Trust Open are eligible excuse me, to compete this week. Three players who started last week outside the top 100 moved inside the number with their performances at Glen Oaks Club in New York. They were Bubba Watson, David Lingmuth, and Harold Varner III. So now, only the top 70 in points at the end of this week will be eligible to compete in the BMW Championship outside of Chicago in two weeks' time. So, Chris DeMarco, I ask you, who, from 71 through 100 in the standings right now, do you think will play their way into the BMW Championship? Well, two guys that aren't th that far out for me, um, Bubba Watson and Adam Scott. I'm going to go with Bubba Watson first. Obviously, he made the biggest move last week from 113 to 72, mm -hmm. so he's not that far out. He's also kind of, you know, succumbed to the fact that it hasn't been his best year and he's okay with it and he's looking forward to having some time off. So sometimes a comfortable golfer is the guy to be scared of the most because he's not really out there trying to play. His, he's always trying, he's always giving it his best effort, but he's not putting all the pressure on himself. He's just gonna, if I go play well, I'll keep moving on. If I don't play well, I'm going home and see my family. That is always a nice thing to do. And then Adam Scott's the other one. He's um, only one spot behind him, but Adam Scott took off last week, birth of a child. And, um, you know, we'll see how he does, I mean, taking that week off. What was interesting is we thought that Adam Scott's season might be over because he had planned to take this week off as well. And then they had a little early delivery with the second child, maybe knew what dad was trying to achieve. Mom and, and baby are in good health. So he thought, you know what, I can tear it up this week and right. I'll give it a go. And he needs to give it a go because he is currently outside of the top 70 and he needs, as we said, to play his way in to make it to Chicago. Yeah, and both of them have about the same resume going. They both have four top tens this year. Um, very uncharacteristic years for both mm -hmm. of them. Both of them are usually top 10 machines with a win or two each. So um, we'll see. Hopefully one of them would get into that top 70, make it, maybe make a run at the end. Yeah, great to see them back and congratulations to uh, the Scots on the birth of their second child. But now let's say good morning to Bailey Mosier. Good morning, Cara Robinson. Yes, thank you so much for that. Who knows the way DJ is playing, played last week and is playing now. Uh, maybe it won't matter for any of the rest of the guys in the FedEx Cup. So I do have the T-sheet for you on this Wednesday morning. Coming up, our equipment guru, Matt Adams. He has the lowdown on the latest offerings from Cobra that are more technology than golf clubs. That's the F-Max Irons and Woods. They're what Ricky Fowler plays and they can help you shoot your best scores yet. And once you have the right equipment in your bag, how about a few pointers on scoring? That's where our Golf Channel Academy coach comes in. He's here to help with some drills that you can do on the range that will simulate the same sort of pressure that you're going to feel on the golf course. We also have a little lifestyle flair for you this morning on Morning Drive. Our travel insider, Matt Janella, he recently took a trip to Beantown to preview all the hot spots to visit this week if you're in the neighborhood to watch some of the action at the Dell Technologies Championship. So part one and two of his trip are on tap for you this morning. But for now, Damon, back over to you. All right, let's see. I can't get to that position. What do you got? I got juggle though. Look at that. 
You don't. So you don't have the. You I don't know, got the that. Fine angle. But I don't know if Brooke and Rory have this. They don't have oh, they don't got that. this. Oh yeah. Right and look at the camera too. Oh, I gotta look at the camera.